no questions off off topic, and I'll answer about anything you throw at me. Well, I'll tell you what, then. Here's one. Uh, is Nick Goulas the cheapest man in the history of wrestling? It would be hot. Other than me, <laughs> it would. Uh, <laughs> no, I have, I have a big heart. I love helping people that are misfortunate. That's why I do so much fundraising for Louisville Metro Area Homeless uh filipino typhoon victims they we take for granted here so much that we've got um looking at your office uh looking at my place um it might be considered not such a big deal but trust me in the philippines this is a big deal they, they would look at me or you and think we're multi-millionaires um it's it, they appreciate so very little and that's why i love helping people like that the wrestling business much the same way i think promoters should um, not look to fuck their wrestlers so much and actually bring them along, develop them, give them a livable wage if you're making a livable wage. But then again, you can only pay what this person or this talent can draw. Some promoters way overpay their talent. Um, you had Braun Strowman recently making, I hear, $1.2, $1.3 million a year. And then you have guys like Rico Constantino who never, ever cracked a uh, hundred grand with WWE and was involved in some pretty cool wrestling angles. The Billy and Chuck thing was the greatest. Uh, he was there five years. And of course I'm loyal to Rico. He's a long time dear friend, but when you got Braun Strowman making 1.3 million and Rico couldn't crack a hundred grand with uh, the talent that he brought to that show, um, that's disturbing to me. The pay, the difference in pay uh, I don't know what Zerlina Vega was getting, but Zerlina was making more money doing Twitch than she was working for WWE and basically forced to tell WWE to get fucked. I'll just do Twitch and make a good living as opposed to working for your slave labor wages, which when you factor in what they do, what they give up, um, the, 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 your, your life is over when you're a WWE star. You have no personal life and your, your circus meet. Um, I'm so glad that I didn't spend 10, 15, 20 years of my life doing that because I wouldn't have made it. Uh, one thing Jimmy said that was wise is, uh, or inaccurate is that, Kenny, you would not last two weeks up there. You're going to be better off here. You're going to be making the equivalent of 100 to 150 grand a year because you're a salesman. You're going to get the advertising money. You book the personal appearances. You sell yourself like no one's ever done in a local market. And you're going to be making the equivalent of 100 to 150 grand a year here. This is back in the eight, uh, 90s and early 2000s on into 2012 when I retired. You never have to leave Louisville. All you got to do is show up for television. You pick and choose what shows you want to do. How could you have a better life? And you get to be with your son every day. Uh, if you go on the road, you'll never see your son. They're going to fuck with you. They're going to mess with your uh, promos. They're going to mess with your thoughts on wrestling. They will make you miserable. You will quit within two weeks. I said, you're probably right. I said, if they're not going to let me be me, then I probably would not be very happy there. Yes. The exposure would be great. Yes. I will make millions off selling myself, whether they pay me or not, I will find a way to make the money, but I'm going to be miserable and I will take happiness over misery any time of, uh, of the day or night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you back now, uh, probably to the late 70s, or uh, I suppose it was the 80s, really. And um, no, actually, it would have been the 70s. And uh, But you Nick Goulas was a cheap son of a bitch, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, uh, leading on to that, um, why wasn't George Goulas NWA champion? Uh, well, they tried. They tried. Uh, Jer Jerry Jarrett and I talked about that recently on my podcast. And that is why Jerry basically left Nick the Goulas Welch promotion, formed his own promotion. And uh, I think eventually it became Jarrett Welch. Uh, they left Goulas uh, because Nick wanted Jerry to promote Louisville, Evansville, Lexington. And he wanted to make uh, George Goulas the champion of uh, the Memphis wrestling territory. It wasn't necessarily the NWA champ, but that was never going to happen in a billion fucking years. That was not going to happen. The, the, whoever was responsible for the NWA at that time, and Nick Goulas did have a lot of clout. But as you notice, the NWA world champion never really was hosted in Memphis. Lawler got some pictures once of a belt that he didn't win due to a disqualification. And they worked the angle to where Lawler could leave the ring with the belt, go backstage and get pictures. And then when they gave the, the belt back to, I, I think it was, uh, I think it was Briscoe, Jack Briscoe, if I remember correctly, um, they gave the belt back and Lance Russell saying, well, Jerry, uh, 
you know, that was a good go with that match. It looked like you might've had it, but unfortunately you didn't win the match. He says, no, no, you're wrong. I won the match. I'm the NWA world heavyweight champion, but well, Jerry, where's the belt? Well, the, the belt is merely a symbol. It's a trinket. I possess the title. I possess that now. So Lawler claimed to be the NWA champion with no belt. So he said, will you show that picture that we had taken in the back? Will you show the press? And there's Lawler with the NWA title. He knew in his mind what he was going to do, that he was going to proclaim himself as the NWA heavyweight champion. I got pictures of the belt to prove it. I can't help what these crooked politician referees and promoters did. I am the true NWA champion. He merely has a symbol, a trinket, and that is meaningless. So he devalued the, N the NWA world heavyweight title and made the belt and made the title the important thing, which he claimed to have. George Goulas was never going to see 12 seconds with the NWA title. Even if they let him shine it, they would have took it away from him in case he damaged it. <laughs> he was absolutely fucking horrible. And uh, Jerry Jarrett once said to me, he says, Kenny, sometimes you can love your son too much. And that was a direct uh, shot at Nick Goulas for thinking his son had any value in the professional wrestling business. Uh, it was a daddy said sell. Daddy said sell. Daddy said sell. And that's a shoot that really happened. That and also, race, that also, also Nick Gula said, it's not how much you earn. It's how much you save. And uh, when the crowd would be 5,000, 8,000, 12,000 people, and you would expect your payout, based on the gate and he said well nick this is a payout of like six thousand people uh, we had twelve thousand in here tonight yeah i know there's a lot of people in here apparently someone left the back door open and a lot of people got in for free this is the gate so he was notorious for someone left the door open it's not how much you earn it's how much you save and daddy said sell <laughs> that was george gulas <laughs> telling the wrestlers you better sell when i hit you <laughs> Daddy said sell. Well, daddy, daddy makes the paychecks. So you better fucking sell or daddy ain't going to pay you. I can't imagine him pulling that shit with a uh, Harley race though. Yeah, no, that, that would not have flew. And yeah, Lawler had a lot of NWA world heavyweight matches, but the commitment would be Lawler would have to leave Memphis. Well, the fucking money was in Memphis. Nobody was drawing crowds like Memphis. So why would Lawler take the title and tour the country and have all those responsibilities? and go to houses that were one half, one third, or one fourth of what Memphis was, and go to places that didn't really know Jerry Lawler, uh, the, the, where the crowds, just because Lawler was champion, uh, the other guys were way more recognizable. The Briscoes, the Funks, the uh, Harley Races, those guys were much more nationally known than Jerry Lawler. I think Lawler was the best talent. He would have been a great NWA champion. But he was making too fucking much money in Memphis. Jerry Jared said they were printing money um, and that Jerry Lawler almost left the company because Jared did not give him the 10 percent of the gate raise he was expecting. Jerry was getting 10 percent of the gate. And the agreement was, is if we do good, if you come with me and we do good, I'll give you a raise within six months to 20 percent of the gate. Well, Jerry Jarrett didn't do that. Lawler confronted him backstage says, Hey, by the way, I'm just letting you know, I'm going to start my own wrestling company. I'm going to do this on my own. And Jerry says, well, why are you doing it? He says, well, you know, you told me I was going to get a 10% raise. I didn't get that. So I'm going to try it on my own. Well, Jerry says to Lawler, he says, well, I think you're going to do good at the wrestling part. He says, but Jerry, 90% of this is the business part. And you don't know that the way I do. Um, so you're really going to go. And Jerry says, yeah, I'm going to go. All right. Well, I wish you the best. I truly do. No hard feelings. Jerry says, well, is that all you're going to say? He said, well, what do you want me to say? Um, he says, well, about my, ten you're not even going to offer me the 10%. No, no, I'm not going to offer you a 10% raise. I feel terrible that I forgot to do that. So what I'm going to do, Jerry, is I'm going to give you 20% raise. So I'm going to give you the 20% you're getting now, and I'll give you another 20. So you're going to get 40% of the gate. If you'll stay with me, and forget running your own company. Lawler says 40%. He's, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. So Lawler at one point, according to Jerry Jarrett, I haven't got Lawler's side of this yet. Lawler was getting 40% of the gate. Why the fuck are you going to go to the Cow Palace in San Francisco or Oregon where Piper is or down in Florida or the Carolinas or Sheik's territory? Why are you going to go to any or New York? Why are you going to go to any of these places when you're getting 40% of the gate of 12,000 fans? Yeah. And you can stay home at the same and, time. And, and of course night. they're wrestling every night. They're in Louisville. 
Memphis, Nashville, Evansville, Lexington, Tupelo, Blytheville, uh, countless on and ons. Uh, they were working eight days a week, and a lawler's getting 40% of the gate. I, I ain't leaving. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Uh, Shove your title up your ass. I'll fight for it every now and then, but you can keep your goddamn title. 